It's a 24-hour operation, akin to a military exercise. 250 chefs turn more than 100 tons of raw ingredients into a quarter of a million meals in just seven days. On board the world's biggest cruise ship. At the moment, we're having an average of 28 to 30,000 meals a day. And one meal poses the biggest challenge of all. Lobster. I cannot hear the word lobster anymore. <laughs> It's very challenging. You have to have a love for it. Saturday morning. Port Everglades, Florida. The world's largest cruise ship is in port with an empty larder. This is what I like. This is what I like. It looks good. Well, our inventory level is right where it should be. Keith Brett is the ship's inventory manager. To his delight, in just seven days, a small city of passengers have eaten their way through more than 100 tons of food. They are on vacation, and we try our best to please them all the time. I love what I do. I mean, I've been doing it for so long, and you know, it's, it's a smooth process now. A process that begins and ends every Saturday. I think the challenging time is the turnaround day, the loading day. That is the most challenging and difficult. And the heart of this operation, deck two. Hidden from the guests, this lifeline connects every aspect of the galley operations. Twenty-one food storage rooms feed into three main prep areas. Butcher's shop, the fruit and veg station and the seafood kitchen. Keeping the onboard catering operation running requires military level precision. And it starts with one of the biggest shopping lists in the world. Nightmare. Watermelon, there are 12,000 pounds of watermelon in here right now. Pineapple will be 9,000. Strawberries, 4,800 pounds of strawberry. Honeydew, 6,000. Uh, it's very challenging. It's always moving. You know, we, we have to take the products in within a certain framework. You know, have everything within its storage facility in a timely manner. There are 24 restaurants spread the length and breadth of this 362 meter long ship. And 23 have their own kitchen or galley. Some big, some small. And 
These pantries supply every ingredient. It's like clockwork. You do it for 365 days in a year, you're gonna get accustomed to what you need. Everybody that needs to be in place is in place, so there's no hiccups. Keith has only nine hours to fill his larder. We, we have stuff coming on board. Everyone knows where it goes, how it's stored, the correct temperature, and everything that they need to do. It's all part of a synchronized orchestra playing together. We all work in harmony to make it, you know, a smooth day for everyone. To beat the clock, Keith's orchestra plays inside and out. When I come outside, I actually check all the box, all the product. I need to make sure we have the right quality, the right product, and also we check for the expired date. Uh, you know, we need the right quality of stuff to feed the guests. It can really be a challenging position on board because you are responsible for so many line items on board and you cannot run out of. It impacts the guests satisfaction, it impacts the operation, and of course, the end result, you know, the guest is not satisfied, they weren't happy with the voyage or the cruise vacation. And Keith takes that satisfaction personally. So I'm looking for grapes that are either blemish or bruised in some way from the vendor. So far, the quality is good, right? And I don't see really any impact on the cruise uh, for this week. Keith's clock counts down to departure. The chef's is ticking towards dinner. In just a few hours, thousands of hungry passengers will arrive on board. That is when the chef begins his shopping. And that is when immediately after we shut those doors and we begin to say, he's preparing for tomorrow, lunch, breakfast, and even the, the day after. This goes on on a 24-hour period. It's not an eight-hour job from Monday to Friday. It's definitely not. Executive chef Thomas Palaszczuk is the ship's culinary commander-in-chief. Morning, Arrow. How are you? Everything OK? It's cooking. It's his job to split the kitchen armies into specialist units. This is my ship. In total, I have uh, 250 chefs working for me. This includes the galley management. I would say at the moment we're having an average of uh, 28 to 30,000 meals a day. And they start before they even leave port. First mission. Lettuce. We are here at the moment in the vegetable preparation. All the vegetable for all kitchen on board get prepared here downstairs. We have to unpack and we have to sanitize everything here on deck number two. For the simple fact, we don't know where the boxes or the cartons are we are standing uh, at the uh, supplier or if the truck was clean. With certain vegetables, they need to have a certain size. They need to cut uh, equal, so it's easier to do it by hand. But not this vegetable. This is our Mercedes Benz. With this machine, you can cut every type of lettuce. 
We have different knives and different programs inside uh, to adjust the knife and the cuttings. It saves a lot of time. Instead of washing it by hand, the machine is doing it. For the amount of lettuce we're using on a daily basis, uh, would be very time consuming. So from here, we take then the lettuce in this basket, here inside, and it's like a hair dryer, it gets dried now. It's like a sensory food, and get uh, all the water, the lettuce is nice and dry, and you can store it much more longer. It makes a difference because lettuce is growing on the earth, in soil. So in order to prevent that any bacteria or anything is inside, we have to store it 40 degrees below in uh, the fridge. While Chef sorts his salad, Keith counts his groceries. The very last thing I do is make sure that all of the products that we have actually ordered is on board and accounted for. Once that is done, my day is not done, but that portion of my day is done. And the challenge begins. This culinary army has just seven days to turn these raw ingredients into 200,000 meals. After a night at sea, Oasis reaches her first port of call, the Bahamas. It's an extremely hard day for us because we're arriving early and we're leaving early port. So this will affect the operation tremendously. The first thing that will happen at the beginning of the day, we begin to prepare the pallets or what we call the shopping list for the various divisions on board. We're going to pick it daily. Huh? It gets stored in the provision area, and we pick it from there daily. We make our ordering for the consumption we have on a daily basis. One of Keith's right. biggest storage headaches, bananas. These are the different stages of the banana. These are used by the chef to make what is called a banana drink. It's in a separate room from the fresh vegetables because, as you know, bananas give off a certain gas. That gas itself can impact the fresh vegetables or the other fruits within that room. And as you can see, we have this stage and we have a little greener stage. So at the end, or coming closer to the end of the voyage, this stage will have gotten to this stage of bananas, which would give us duration at the end of the cruise. And they are to the back. The greener stage are to the back. See? While Keith battles his bananas, culinary assistant Zandro Salamo is on seafood duty. It's fish kebabs for dinner tonight. We have uh, shrimp, scallop, and uh, mung fish. 1,100 for tonight on this. This is uh, around 90 pounds of mung fish. And the scallop, 180. And the shrimp, around 200 pounds of shrimp. And they're all headed here. The Opus dining room spans three decks. Each deck has its own galley. You know, we are doing a large volume, and you know, all, and all hands on board, you know, so the more hands in, the less the workload is. On an average night, 
This team feeds some of the finest foods available to over 5,000 people in just six hours. And seafood isn't the only option. Every night, the chefs offer at least a dozen different menu choices. After their short stop in the Bahamas, passengers are back. And they're hungry. It's time for that fish to fry. Head of this galley battalion, executive sous chef Junior Downer. What happened here um, during the um, service period? The waiter will take an order from the, the guest or the customer and wants the waiter to take that order. And he, he creates a ticket. Then it's all hands on deck. We have um, someone on the outside to, to clean that plate and to put that garnish. cooking in batches, you know, the, the monitor helps us to, to see the amount of, you know, food that they are ordering, so we have the opportunity to see and um, cook accordingly. This operation happens twice every night across the three main galleries, and there's still 20 other kitchens on board. Six hours later, time to clean up, ready for tomorrow. Oasis has been at sea just over 36 hours. Already tens of thousands of meals have been served, and there are still five days to go. The worst thing, I guess, for the most of the people is the timing. It's a lot of time, time consuming the job. It's quite interesting to, for a regular day, you know. First of all, we wake up and we make sure that breakfast is up and running. And then we'll go we'll start with the pantry for the um, main dining. That normally starts at about 11 o'clock. After lunch closes at about 1.45 to 2 o'clock, we'll go for a small break. And then we comes back about 4 o'clock in the um, afternoon. We go through all the stations, make sure that everything is there, up and running, you know, anything missing. If something needs to be corrected, we do it right there and then. And from there, you know, we move up here to the, um, to the pantry and we go through the um, full menu, you know, and we go to the service line. We start to set up and then by 5.30, 5.45, you know, we start, you know, the operation and break between sitting, you know, and then we check again, recheck for the second sitting, you know. So it's quite interesting for our day here and board, you know, as executive sous chef. As breakfast gets underway, time for a snap inspection. Altogether, we have about 23 food outlets on board. So I walk them all. I do this daily, at least three times. He's looking for cleanliness, tidiness, and correct storage procedures. Everything that will ensure his kitchens produce only the best food. Yeah, do me a favor, check, uh, check the fridge here. You know, in the beginning of the contract, you use more the staircases, but uh, if you go towards the end of the contract, <laughs> you prefer the elevator. Next stop, the crew cafe. In the kitchen at the moment, I have uh, 24 different nationalities. Of course, we try as much as possible to cater for all different nationalities we have on board. Like, for, for example, for Asian people, for people from the Caribbean, 
and people from Eastern Europe who try to, as much as possible, to accommodate the needs and the taste. Not forgetting his personal preference. My favorite food? Of course, sausage. I'm German. <laughs> morning, 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 morning. Oh, can you close the lid from the ice machine, please? So by walking through the galleys, uh, gives you the first indication how the day is going. Morning. You see how they're prepared. The people are relaxed, not running like chickens around. So it's a good indication that everything is running smooth. I go every day inside several times. Whenever I hear, I pass by. I never miss it. So they, they cannot hide anything. I will find it. Chef is not the only one who enjoys a daily stroll. My staff and I, we make daily walks with the chef to ensure quality and freshness is maintained all the time. Proper temperature control, expiration dates, stuff like that. These are all the things that we do. It's after me the most important uh, person on board, the sanitation controller. What I maybe not catch, he catches. Temperature is crucial to maintaining quality and freshness, both in storage and in the galleys. On the passenger decks, it's breakfast time. Breakfast most of the time you know already more or less how many breakfasts you're gonna have because you collect in the evening the donuts. Then it's a job for the unit's code breakers. They must decipher everyone's handwriting. It's a scramble to fill every tray. For example, yesterday we had about 600 orders room service. And that's quite a lot for a morning. And the time frame is very close and uh, of course you are limited uh, with, with people as well. Like the meals, every pastry and bread roll on these breakfast trays is made fresh daily. By the end of the week, this onboard bakery will need its way through close to six tons of flour. But one staple in the bakery department that isn't made on board is a burger bun. This butcher's room supplies the entire ship. This machine is the burger machine. We made six ounces for dining room. We make five ounces for general rockets and tone and sometimes. But this we carry it on, it have it one weight. But to see that it have it right weight, we weight on the scale over here. It's quite a big amount of beef product that we use. We have the strip loin, we have the tenderloin, we have the prime ribs, beef shoulders and stuff like that. Back in the main galleys, it's dinner time again. 
The four service begins. The chefs in each gully perform a ritual. Our seafood for the night is skewer, mealy shrimp, scallop, and uh, monkfish. We serve with broccoli, marinated uh, cherry beef, and the last one is our chocolate souffle, which is served with espresso. We we'll taste every single dish on the menu. And then from there, you know, we adjust, you know, accordingly. We talk about the bread, we talk about the, the soups, we talk about everything on, on menu that day. Junior Downer is the senior officer in this kitchen. If he disapproves, they start again. Normally, out of experience, you can say if you look at a dish, you know exactly what is missing. So I want that they taste what they're cooking. Because if they don't like it, the guests don't like it. So if they like it, the guests will like it. This is one instance where chef prefers to observe than indulge. I mean, we have uh, 23 gullies on board, and if you taste on a daily basis on every gully, <laughs> can you imagine how you look after four months? <laughs> okay, guys, uh, listen up carefully. Well, so it's here, it's quite nice. I like it. They are seafood uh, skewer, it's so nice. I like the mouth fish, nice and tender. Okay, the curry, very good, the rice. Nice, you know, didn't overcook today. For the papa, very, very good. Good job, job well done. Hi. Maybe the cold soup needs to blend a little bit more. Apart from that, everything is uh, excellent. You did a very good job here. Job well done, guys. Thank you very much. Tonight, the guests agree. But there's still four more nights to go. To the relief of the chefs, it's a sure day and a long one. giving them time for some culinary housekeeping. We have a training program with Royal Caribbean in connection with the American Culinary Federation, where we're having a program. We're going chapter by chapter with them through for basic knowledge of cooking. And when we complete all the chapters, they have to make an exam. And if they pass, they get a new scarf. The yellow scarf is our first contract or new hires. The blue scarves are all the commies or cook trainees. And the red scarves are chef de parties. It means they're in charge for one section in the, inside the gully. For example, sauce cook or fish cook or entre metier. These are the red scarves. Today, these young guns are the ones under fire. They have just two and a half hours to wow their bosses. Easier said than done. Finally, the table is set. It's time for the verdict. Chef, what do you think about the taste? Uh, it's too much salt. It's too dry. I think it's not good. Not bad. Well, the zucchini is also good. Yeah. 
this is your first time doing it? Yeah, they're all their first time. Oh, okay. For first time, it's quite good, yeah? Yeah, yeah. This, you're going to take this as a learning process. Yeah. This is not a classical cut. This is nice, yeah? The chicken look um, acceptable, but just be careful when you're cooking um, these vegetables, yeah? that you don't kill them and take out all the vitamins from it. All right, Chevy? Okay, right. I'm really happy with what you did here today. Good job, guys. If you continue in this direction, for sure you guys are going to be a good chef someday. Like what you see here. One chef who made the grade is Dominic Bradshaw. He now runs his own platoon in one of Oasis's smaller specialist kitchens. It's about being fortunate, whereas all the sous chefs get placed around the ship in every aspect of the culinary department. So I've been fortunate enough to be placed here. It's an Italian style restaurant. The idea is to be having sharing plates where you can get large portions and it can be divided up. It's like sitting at your uncle Giovanni's table where you would be getting a large plate of food and you would all just grab it and put it on your plate and so we'll be sharing, entertaining and a very relaxed atmosphere, a very nice atmosphere. Unless you're this side of the kitchen door. We have two teams. We've got most of the team up here now, but two teams. One will be prepping on the night service downstairs in the downstairs galley, whilst the service is going on that night as well. So you've kind of got continuous production, even though we do in 150, 200 on that evening. We've still got the guys downstairs prepping, making sure we've got backup for the next day. So it's a continuous, continuous stream. Another island stop for the passengers. But the chefs can't afford to put their day on simmer. Tomorrow is lobster night. The busiest night of the week. We use close to 2,000 pounds of lobster on a seven day voyage. room is transformed into a makeshift field kitchen. It's out with the meat and in with the seafood. The process is actually very simple. The first step what you need to do, you need to defrost them properly. Properly means slowly. That takes hours in cold storage. It's man versus crustacean. Lobsters in sight. First plan of attack, the butterfly maneuver. army of expertise, there are still a few escapees. Time for a well-earned drink. Non-alcoholic, of course. These guys still have dinner to prepare. But when they do get a day off, there's plenty of choice at the bar. And Keith is always on standby in case of a shortage. I'm checking on the rum, of course, at this time, because this is one of our fast-moving products. You know, it's used in a lot of the recipes we have on board. So therefore, you want to make sure we have enough to last, of course, the seven-day duration. 
It's an impressive drinks cabinet. Even an, a, a ship this size, it is a bit too small. But we manage, you know. And for those who prefer a softer option, there's always a fresh supply of water. That's one thing you can't run out of on board the ship. Water, we go through 15,000 bottles. But sometimes when I order it, the vendor will send an email. Um, can you verify this quantity? It is what we need, you know, it's because we're using so much. Five days into the cruise, and the chefs are clocking close to 200,000 meals. Using nearly 30 tons of vegetables, 25 tons of meat, and a whole lot of salad. But there are still two dinners to go, and tonight is the biggest culinary event of the week. Lobster is on the menu. The clock in the main galley is also ticking. It's time to process those 4,000 lobsters before they're released to the waiting passengers. We're gonna go into seasoning them. This is a mixture of butter and seasoning and spices and some secret ingredients. 100 down. Over three and a half thousand to go. Lobster. I cannot hear the word lobster anymore. <laughs> and he won't have to. Lobster's finally on the menu. But before they start cooking, it's time for their favorite daily drill. Next appetizer I have is the orange and grapefruit salad, endives, orange, asparagus, chip and arugula salad, thinly sliced cucumber. Two nice grill, it's marinated in a uh, red curry sauce. Mascovi top press, served with lentils, with germ crusted salmon, topped with uh, micro lettuce. Lamb is grilled and served with sokotashi, which consists of garbanzo bean, lima bean, green beans, bell peppers. And finally, it's the bison. This delicacy can cost over $60 per kilo. Bison, you just grill according to the guest temperature, what they want, medium rare, medium, medium well, or well done. It's a menu that would make any mouth water. But unlike the passengers, the chefs don't have time to savor their meal. It's judge and go. The lobster calling. Deck five, Nick Walsh's galley. This is my time dining. This is where passengers can come in whenever they like. We start at roughly about six o'clock and we take reservations right the way through till 9.30. Tonight is lobster night. This is one provision that Keith overstocks. I, they might ask for more lobster, and they would get it, of course. Satisfaction is the key here, so give them more lobster. There will be no lobster left tonight at all, I can guarantee it. We get the occasional one where the tail's a bit soft or it's been bruised through transportation, so we discard them. But pretty much there's never any lobster left. It's always a mad dash at 9.30, 10 o'clock, between the three galleys, who's got the most lobster, who's got some left, and no. There's never any left. Same with the shrimp. And if there is, yes, I will devour them. I will eat them for my dinner, yeah. The teams prepare for battle. 
Up here tonight, uh, I will probably do roughly about 900 to 1,000 lobsters. So we're roughly cooking about 70 to 80 lobsters at a time. We cook them, we slowly steam them with a little bit of herb butter for eight minutes, and we distribute them onto the three lines. With the troops in formation, the order to advance is given. Normally, uh, of a regular evening, we'd have a chicken, a beef, uh, a fish line, but tonight we dedicate three lines solely for lobster. So I've sort of got nine guys that are just dealing with the lobster tonight. It's our busiest one. Uh, we roughly have, tonight we've got, I think we're up to about 300 within the first hour. So it, it's going to be crazy for us. But we've got a good team up here. We all know what we're doing. Uh, and, and my job is to make sure the lobster goes out hot. It sits in its shell properly. The garnish is as we re request it. Uh, the vegetables are hot and the potatoes are hot and uh, the plates are clean. At one point, we could have 70, 70 to 80 lobster away at the same time. Cues of waiters taking their lobster out. So. True to prediction, the lobster goes down a storm. With the lobster successfully devoured, the crew are on the final stretch. For seven days, a team of 250 chefs and an army of support staff have prepared, cooked, and served their way through over 100 tons of food to provide every passenger with the culinary journey to remember. Time for Keith to check his remaining supplies. Oh, the list was on spot. You know, right now we're looking great, as you can see. Most of what you saw on boarding days last Saturday, it's now gone. Yeah, currently, what volume you are seeing here now is just what we will need for tomorrow, boarding day, as well as in, should in case the ship is not able to go into port, we have sufficient item to sustain us for the next two days at sea or wherever. The real important basic item, the watermelon, the cantaloupe, the pineapple, some grapes, oranges, apples, the core items that a chef will require. Not the exotic items so much, but the main core items. And tomorrow, he starts all over again. 6.30 in the morning, I do a quick walkthrough, make sure the temperatures of the, sh the fridges are okay, and, you know, we begin. Everything is in place, all the stuff that is needed is in place, and ready for the operation of loading. Yeah, takes place again tomorrow. Right. And in the galleys, they'll be doing the same, preparing another seven-day master feast for the next 6,000 passengers. You can make people happy. So I think this is a nice thing to do.